Hello everybody, I hope you guys are all enjoying your day. Today we're going to be looking at your spring forecast. This is going to be my first spring forecast, my preliminary spring forecast. We're going to be going over your temperature anomalies as well as your precipitation anomalies. And then at the end of the video, we're going to be going over your overall forecast. Uh, and that's going to kind of recap your uh, spring, which is going to be your meteorological spring, which is going to go from March 1st all the way until uh, June 1st. And then you start summer, of course. So we're going to start now with your temperature anomalies and you see we have a good area of about of above average uh, conditions over the western United States stretching down through the southern Rockies and then down into the southern United States and this is going to be your slightly above average layer uh, so anywhere in this yellow you are expecting slightly above average uh, conditions won't be too noticeable but uh, on paper it should be uh, above average for the entire three month time period now here's your orange shade which is going to be your moderately above average area and this is going to be stretching from southern Oregon down through the the Pacific um, Southwest and then also down through the southern United States and then kind of ending at Texas uh, where you're going to be seeing moderately above average conditions now we're going to start to add your below average area and this is where I think you, you're going to have these colder uh, dips of air that come through into the United States and I think this is really going to be skewed by March and early April where I think you're going to get a lot of this colder air dipping down uh, south from Canada uh, as that ridge from the southeast kind of breaks uh, later on I think you're going to start to get that slightly below average to even uh, you'll see here moderately below average uh, conditions and I feel like really uh, March and April are going to play a big factor into this they're really going to skew uh, these numbers where even if um if even if may and uh, the earliest part of june is very warm it's still going to be very cold at uh, the beginning portion of this time frame so it's going to kind of skew this uh, a little bit below average for parts of the eastern us now we're adding our next layer here this is going to be your moderately below average area and this is for parts of north dakota and south dakota eastward through Min minnesota into iowa illinois wisconsin and into michigan indiana ohio and then through through the interior northeast so western pennsylvania and western new york also getting in on this uh, moderately below average so this is where it's going to be uh, noticeable that it is going to be below average and i think this is where the air this is the area really right in here that is going to have that cold air not only stick around from march and april and early april but also lingering into late april and then into early may at least uh, again that is getting far out and we are going to tweak this i am going to tweak this uh, as we get later on but uh, for now it looks like these areas are going to have the most sustained cold air out of all of these regions so now we're going to go on to precipitation anomalies and these are the ones that are think are, that i think are going to change the most because precipitation it's always hard to forecast you get one or two storms and it completely can shift this uh completely other direction uh so this is one of the harder things to forecast but nonetheless it is one of the things we are going to forecast here so we have slightly below average conditions anywhere in this light brown here and this is going to be from parts of the southern Rockies through the southwest and then into parts of the northwest northern Rockies and into the northern plains as well you're all going to be seeing slightly below average conditions also notice this little gap right here this is where I think you're going to have some low pressures form usually you get them uh, right around the panhandles of Oklahoma Texas through southeast uh, Colorado and into uh, northern New Mexico that's usually where you get your uh, systems to start forming and that's where you can get some big systems so it is going to be I feel like there is going to be a lot of these systems kind of riding through that area and that's going to allow for some uh, average to above average conditions as far as precipitation over these areas so as we add your next area of below average, this is going to be your moderately below average. This is going to be more noticeable here. The first shade of below average, not too noticeable. But once you get into the second shade, this is where it's going to be more noticeable. For the immediate coastline for Washington State, Oregon State, and then through uh, California as well, uh, you're going to be seeing some moderately below average conditions. 
Now, here is your above average area, and again, those uh, those low pressures, once they start to strengthen and get out here, they're going to really have a lot of time to intensify as well. You might also have some severe weather activity heightened for the southeast, uh, and then also you're going to have these systems, of course, move through. These are usually bigger systems, so a lot of these areas actually get in, in, uh, uh, involved with all this rainfall, uh, and, and usually in the springtime it is rainfall, some snowfall uh, over the northern New U.S. Uh, also associated with these systems later or, or earlier on. Now, here is your second shade of above average. This is going to be moderately above average, and this is going to be more noticeable. This is where I think you're going to have more severe weather or just rainfall and rain events over these areas. And this is going to be for Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Arkansas through down through Texas and Louisiana through Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and all of Florida as well. Going to be seeing these moderately uh, above average conditions as far as precipitation. So now we are going to get into my overall forecast here, uh, and this is going to kind of summarize your entire month pretty much as far as what you're going to be seeing uh, with precipitation or uh, temperature swings or any notes or any notable events that are going to be going on throughout the spring period which is going to be again from March 1st all the way through June 1st so here getting into it we're going to go uh, area by area here now again this is going from March for uh, March 1st through uh, June 1st and you're seeing dry conditions over the western coast, and again, that's where you have that moderately below average air area, and that's going to be really where I think you're going to have that dry air set up. So now we're going to add our next layer here, warmer conditions over parts of the western U.S. through much of the western Rockies and parts of the Cascades, and then into parts of the southern Rockies and uh, into south Texas as well, seeing warmer conditions, and I think uh, you're going to have these days where it's going to be cooler, especially uh, later on, I believe you are going to have these cooler temperatures, but uh, for the early part of spring, at least, I think it's going to be very warm. It's going to be um, most likely a ridging pattern out west and then a troughing pattern out east. Uh, now, this is most likely going to change, and as we get to uh, later later in the spring time period and then earlier into summer, uh, you might have this switch up. Now, that's something we can't really forecast, but from what we've been seeing, uh, Th this pattern does look to set up at least for late uh for the late winter time period into the early spring time period so i am going to put warmer conditions for now and again i will be updating this forecast at least once maybe twice uh if we do have a lot of changes in our forecast so now we're adding our next uh area and this can be your flip-flop area this is where you're going to have these uh this transition from cold air to warm air this would be a severe weather area most likely in the summer but since it is still going to be cold in these areas not uh, quite your severe weather area you really want that difference between cold and warm air to have that to that's really really where your uh, severe weather is going to set up so the flip-flop area you're not going to have that severe weather it's going to be still too cold to have severe weather maybe into june and may uh, and, uh, may june and then into early uh, uh summer you might see some severe weather in this area but for now just going to put flip-flop there anywhere in that yellow area for the northern rockies you are going to ex be experiencing average conditions now over parts of the central rockies and then through the south central Central U.S. and this is really going to be uh, where you have your dry, you have the, your uh, normal precipitation, you have your normal temperatures. Nothing really too notable to talk about. No special event, uh, special uh, severe weather events or anything like that that look to set up over these areas. Uh, and again, of course, you are going to have storm systems, but that's something that we can't forecast two, three months in advance. So. Now getting into your next area, this is going to be where it's going to be wetter, and it's not going to be too noticeable in these areas, but it should be wetter as you do get those low pressures to form uh, in southeast Colorado uh, or somewhere generally around this area and then kind of move through. Now. Uh, these areas, which we will uncover soon, uh, that that kind of relates to this wetter area, and that relates to these uh, Colorado lows uh, that kind of track through the southern and uh, central United States. 
Now, here's where it's going to be colder. It's not going to be too noticeable, but you will notice, especially early in the springtime period, it will be colder. Now, what happens later on in spring, that's something that's more undecided and that can change uh, very quickly. So, here's where you're going to be seeing some late Arctic blasts. Now, as this uh, pattern sets up where you're going to be seeing those dips in the jet stream very suddenly, you're going to have this polar vortex that's going to get displaced. Now, especially later on uh, or uh in uh, early on uh, in the spring time period so around march you're going to be seeing these arctic blasts still come in uh, now it's not going to be most likely it's not going to be historic cold air since it is march uh you would want to you would have wanted this pattern to set up in january for this arctic cold air but it will be cold air uh, that is going to be coming down from the Arctic, so uh, or at least uh, some areas in northern Canada, central Canada. That's where this air is going to originate, and uh, that's why I put you guys under this late Arctic blast uh, region. Now, here's where it's going to be very wet, where I think you're going to have multiple storm systems, and especially as they track through this area, they're going to get intensified by all this Gulf moisture, and then they're also going to team up with this Pacific moisture that usually originates originates from uh, south of Baja, California. Now, when those two meet, you're going to have this very uh, moisture-rich uh, system that's going to have a lot of energy to work with, and it's going to be allowed to dump a lot of moisture over these areas in a very quick time period. Now, here is where your heart of severe weather is going to set up, and it's going to be from northern Florida through parts of the deep south and then into parts of the southern Ozarks, where you could be dealing with some heightened severe weather uh, this season, uh, in this spring season. Now, uh, this is your final area, and this is going to be where I think you're going to have a late spring, where I think your uh, foliage is going to start to come back on the trees later uh, than normal. And uh, this is going to happen because, of course, this pattern is going to set up later on in winter into early spring, and usually this pattern would have set up uh, this pattern, if you want, you would want this pattern set up earlier. So this is gonna allow for a later spring. Now all of these areas really are gonna be experiencing a later spring. If you do live in this area, you are gonna be experiencing a late spring uh, this year. Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to like the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications so you never miss a video when I upload. Anyways, guys, that was Eli the Weather Guy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.